The Round Table. Cecil Rhodes, 1853-1902, South African financier, British statesman and industrialist, who wanted to make Africa a British dominion from the Cape to Cairo, with the financial support of Nathaniel Meyer Rothschild, 1840-1915, and Alfred Bate, was able to control the diamond mines of South Africa with his De Beers Consolidated Mines Limited, by buying out the French Diamond Company and then merging with the Barnado Diamond Mining Company. He eventually controlled the production of diamonds throughout the world. His consolidated gold fields was also a prosperous gold mining operation. He made $5 million annually. In 1877, while still studying at Oxford, it took him eight years because of having to run the diamond mines, he wrote the first of seven wills, in which each became a separate and legally binding document. It called for the establishment of a secret society with but one object the furtherance of the British Empire and the bringing of the whole uncivilized world under British rule, for the recovery of the United States, and, for, making the Anglo-Saxon race but one empire. Quat. Frank Adelot, a founding member of the Council on Foreign Relations, and the American Secretary to the Rhodes Trustees, wrote in his book, American Rhodes Scholarships, in his first will Rhodes states his aim still more specifically, the extension of British rule throughout the world, the foundation of so great a power as to hereafter render wars impossible and promote the interests of humanity. Quat. When he died, his third will, drafted in 1888, called for the establishment of a trust, run by his son-in-law Lord Rosebery, a Rothschild agent, to administer his fortune. His seventh and last will, named Rothschild the administrator of his estate, and established an educational grant known as the Rhodes Scholarships at Oxford University, which was controlled by the Fabians. The scholarships provided a two-year program for young men, and later, women, from the United States, United Kingdom, and Germany, to carry on the Illuminati conspiracy. Among the Rhodes Scholars, Dean Rusk, CFR, Secretary of State, 1961-69, Walt Whitman Rostow, Special Assistant for National Security Affairs, 1966-69, Senator James William Fulbright, R., 1945-74, Harlan Cleveland, Assistant Secretary of State for International Organization Affairs in the Kennedy Administration, Ambassador to NATO under Presidents Johnson and Nixon, Nicholas Kotzenbach, CFR, U.S., Attorney General, 1965-66, Senator Frank Church, ID.195681, Senator Bill Bradley, N.J., 1979-97, Senator David Boren, O.K., 1979-94, C.F.R., Senator Richard D. Luger, in, 1976 present, Senator Larry Pressler, S.D., 1979-97, C.F.R., Phi Beta Kappa, Senator Paul Sarbanes, M.D., 1977 present, Representative Elliot H. Levitas, G.A., 1975-85, Governor Bill Clinton, R., 1979-81, 1983-92, President, 1993-2001, CFR, Trilateral Commission He Didn't Graduate, Governor Richard Celeste, O., 1983-91, Supreme Court Justice Byron Wizard White, 1962-93, also Phi Beta Kappa, Charles Collingwood, TV Commentator, Howard K. Smith, TV Commentator, George Jerome Goodman, writer known as Adam Smith, Brig, General Pete Dawkins, Pat Hayden, former quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams, Chris Christofferson, songwriter-slash-singer-slash-actor, Rep. Carl Albert, O., 1947-77, Speaker of the House from 1971-77, Hedley Donovan, former editor-in-chief of Time Magazine, later a senior advisor to President Carter, R. James Woolsey, CFR, CIA Director, 1993-95, Rep. John Berdamus, in, 1959-81, later New York University President, General Bernard W. Rogers, Supreme Commander of the NATO Forces in Europe, 1979-87, General Wesley Clark, Supreme Commander of the NATO Forces in Europe, 1997-2000, Stansfield Turner, CIA Director, 1977-81, Robert Penn Warren, Pulitzer Prize-winning poet and novelist, best known for his book All the King's Men. The Rhodes Fortune, through the Rhodes Scholarship Fund, has been used to promote the concept of globalism and one-world government. Up to 1953, out of 1,372 American Rhodes Scholars, 431 had positions in teaching and educational administration, 31 were college presidents, 113 had government positions, 70 held positions in the media, and 14 were executives in foundations. Rhodes began developing his philosophy after hearing a speech by John Ruskin, 1819-1900, at Christ Church at Oxford University, which espoused an opinion, which by extension, furthered the teaching found in Plato's Republic. 
Plato called for a ruling class with a powerful army to keep it in power and a society completely subordinate to the monolithic authority of the rulers. Rhodes was also greatly influenced by Wyndham Reed's book The Martyrdom of Man, published in 1872, which advocated Darwinism and the tremendous suffering that man must undergo, which was epitomized in the phrase The Survival of the Fittest. The book said that the inevitable progress of man was to perfection. Rhodes incorporated this rationalization into his thinking. Rhodes talked about starting an organization to preserve and extend the British Empire. He said in 1877, It is our duty to seize every opportunity of acquiring more territory. More territory simply means more of the Anglo-Saxon race, more of the best, the most human, most honorable race the world possesses. The absorption of the greater portion of the world under our rule simply means the end of all wars. It was this mentality that fueled his desire to unite the world under one form of government. Using the Jesuits and the Masons as organizational models, Rhodes, Rothschild agent Lord Alfred Milner, 1854-1925, other Ruskin associates at Oxford such as Arnold Toynbee, Arthur Glazebrook, Sir George Parkin, Philip Littleton Gell, Sir Henry Birchenough, and a similar group at Cambridge, led by social reformer and journalist William T. Stead, which included, Lord Reginald Balliol Brett, Sir John B. Seeley, Lord Albert Gray, and Edmund Garrett, joined together to form a secret group, on February 5, 1891, there was an inner circle, known as the Circle of Initiates, led by Rhodes, and included an executive committee with Stead, Brett, and Milner, the chief Rhodes trustee, and other members like Lord Arthur Balfour, British foreign secretary who wrote to Rothschild promising his support for the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine, Lord Lionel Walter Rothschild, Sir Harry Johnston, and Lord Albert Gray. The outer circle was known as the Association of Helpers, but was not implemented until 1909-1913, when Milner established it as the Round Table Organization. Their goal was to eventually establish a one-world government, which would be controlled by the international banking community, under the cloak of socialism. They saw England, not as a European power, but as an Atlantic power, and wanted to have a federation of the English-speaking world, which would be controlled by them. In 1897, British and American elitists met in order to come up with ways to accomplish Rhodes' plan to consolidate their respective governments, which would pave the way for a one-world government. On July 24, 1902, a secret organization known as the Pilgrim Society was started in London. Six months later, an American branch was established in New York. Funded by the Rhodes Foundation, they were instrumental in taking control of the Democratic Party in the United States. While he was Governor General and High Commissioner of South Africa from 1897 to 1905, Milner, one of the most influential men in the political and financial circles in England, began to recruit young men, mostly from Oxford and Toynbee Hall, to help run his administration. They became known as Milner's Kindergarten. With his backing, they were able to get jobs in influential positions in government and finance, where they became a dominant force in England's domestic and foreign policy. Between 1909-1913, Milner, Lionel Curtis, Philip H. Kerr, Lord Lothian, and Sir William S. Maris used this group to establish semi-secret discussion and lobbying groups, known as round table groups, in England, the main British dependencies, South Africa, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and India, and the United States. They were all controlled from England, and maintained contact through personal correspondence, frequent trips, and a quarterly journal begun in 1910, called the Round Table. The membership consisted of men who not only had a vast amount of political clout, but some who served in the highest levels of the British government. Though they are still generally referred to as the Illuminati, from this point on, the Round Table would be the group responsible for perpetuating the conspiracy to establish a one-world government. Members of the Round Table have also been referred to as the Committee of 300, or the Olympians. Most members had private fortunes, or were known financiers, however, it was the fortunes of Rhodes, Alfred Bate, 1853-1906, the German financier from Frankfurt, Sir A. Bailey, 1864 to 1940, and the Astor family, that formed the core of their financial support. Since 1925, substantial contributions have come from the Carnegie United Kingdom Trust, J. P. Morgan, the Rockefeller and Whitney families, and associates of Lazard Brothers Bank and Morgan, Grenfell and Company, the London affiliate of Morgan. The Round Table controlled the London Times newspaper, which was owned by the Astor family, as well as publications in other countries. Milner led the group until his death in 1925, when the leadership was taken over by Lionel Curtis, and then by Lord Robert H. Brand, brother-in-law of Lady Astor, until he died in 1963, when the leadership was passed to Adam D. Maris, the son of Sir William, who was promoted to succeed Brand as managing director of Lazard Brothers Bank. Lionel George Curtis, 1872-1955, the British High Commissioner to South Africa and Secretary to Sir Alfred Milner, 
advocated British imperialism, and the establishment of a world state. He believed that men should strive to build the kingdom of heaven here upon this earth, and that the leadership in that task must fall first and foremost upon the English-speaking peoples. In 1919, he established a front organization for the Round Table, known as the Royal Institute of International Affairs, which, after 1923, was headquartered at Chatham House, and is sometimes referred to as the Chatham House Study Group, at 10 St. James Square in London. From 1919 to 1927, there was an Institute of International Affairs started to cover all the round table groups in the British dependencies, and the United States, where it is known as the Council on Foreign Relations, which was a front for J.P. Morgan and Company who controlled a small American round table group. They were funded by Sir Abe Bailey and the Astor family. Today you'll find the Institut des Relations Internationales in Belgium, the Institute for International Affairs in the Netherlands, the Institute for International Affairs in Rome, the Norwegian Institute for Foreign Affairs, the French Institute of International Relations, the Australian Institute of International Affairs, and many others. In June, 2002, the former royal butler, Paul Burrell, revealed to the Daily Mirror in London, that Queen Elizabeth II told him, there are powers at work in this country about which we have no knowledge. Quat. 